Black Crane Supplements, home of the legendary chewable pre-workout No Hydro. Instant absorption for skin bursting pumps and marathon endurance. Recover faster and train harder with No Hydro. Stop wasting your hard-earned money on products that make you feel sick and don't deliver your desired results. Attack your stubborn fat at the source and feel great all day. Melt your stress, drop that bloat, and get in the best shape of your life with Halcyon Shred. Black Crane Supplements was founded upon real science and is a firm believer that less is more. We never tax your adrenal glands or use any cost-cutting ingredients that could be detrimental to your health or performance. Check out BlackCraneSupplements.com. Nine. You want answers! I want the truth! Get ready for two guys who can handle the truth. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! But we can! Dave Lumbo! Chris Aceto! RxMuscle.com presents Heavy Muscle Radio! Watch out! Welcome to another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo and I'm joined as always by the technician Chris Aceto on this February 19th, 2018 afternoon. And Chris, uh, it was birthday weekend for me, the big 5 oh, happy 0 birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I, you, you, you made it to 50. I told you a friend of mine died at 53, so the, yeah. before off the air I said, how's your health? Yeah, you know what the truth is? Um, I don't need any kidneys or livers or uh, or small intestines anytime soon. But um, I will tell you this. Uh, I went to see my dad today. And I told him it was my, because he didn't remember it was my birthday. And I said, sure. Dad, it's my birthday. How old, Oh, really? Uh, how old do you think I am? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, how old do you think you are? He's like, I don't know. I said, you're 88. He goes, I'm not 88. I said, Dad, I turned 50 today. Can you believe it? He's like, well, you don't look a day over 30. I said, well, that, that's that's good coming from you because you're so brutally honest. I'm sure if I looked bad, you'd probably tell me. Yeah. So uh, so everyone asked me what I do did on my birthday. And I really, you know what? It, it, it seems like a lot of pressure. Like when you're a kid, you like look forward to, all right, I'm going to jam as much stuff into my birthday as possibly possible because it's like a big day. Now it's almost like I'm like, well, what can I, I want to have the most unassuming day possible so I could tell people yeah I didn't do anything on my birthday but uh, Amanda wanted to get a, um, a minivan we've been talking about it and my uh, my Mercedes lease is up next month so we went and no we... don't tell me you traded a, a Mercedes in for a <laughs> van no I haven't I'm not allowed to you can't unless it was uh, we actually originally looked at some Mercedes uh, yeah, you know, oh, I've looked at those too. Yeah, they're, they're I don't phenomenal. know why they don't. Why Mercedes and BMW doesn't make a um, a minivan? It's it's crazy. I think they do in Europe. They don't make it over here because they think no one's yeah. going to buy it. But, um, so the the Mercedes goes back next month, and I'll uh, I'll be driving Amanda's uh, X three until that is up the following year. And then I'll maybe I'll trade it and get something nicer. But um, so we got this minivan. We went to Honda, and I said, look. If we're gonna get a minivan. I whatever. I want the, the top of the line Honda <laughs> minivan. <It's laughs> Honda, Honda's one. Yeah, it's Chrysler Pacifica and Honda Odyssey. Those are the two like top minivans, evidently. So we got this uh, without making the whole. It's it's not worth going into it too much. It's not that exciting. We got the Honda Odyssey Touring Elite. That's what it is. There's like three. You have to add three names on it, and that's the num- That's the top of the line. It has all the bells and whistles with the TVs in it and the. You know, I, I got to tell you, the, the technology, believe it or not, I'm shocked. The technology inside this thing is actually better than my Mercedes. I can't believe it. It's got the same stuff plus extra stuff. Like when you plug your mic, it's got this Apple and Android recognition software. So you plug your phone into this, into this, into the vehicle and everything pops up on the screen. My whole phone pops up on there. So... If I'm using the navigation on my phone, it's on the screen. If I'm if I get a text message while I'm driving, it actually reads the text message to me, and it asks me if I want to respond. And guess what? If I say yes and I actually respond and give a response text message, it actually understands what I'm saying. Unlike most of these stupid, you know, you call these these places up on the phone and they they think they're real hot shit. They got voice recognition, but the that voice recognition never understands a word you're saying. You notice that? I don't know if you have experienced yeah, 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 that. Yeah, 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 of course. I'm, I'm probably the most articulate, one of the most articulate people out there, and the fucking voice recognition can never understand what I'm saying. Uh, Excuse me, we did not understand what you said. And they always have these like British accents on these, these stupid things. 
And I'm, I'm screaming like a lunatic. And everyone who works in my office is looking at me like laughing their asses off because I'm screaming at, at, at an automated machine. It's, they, they actually use a former NABRA official's voice in the, uh, in the, in the, in the with the British accent. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, so, but the, what I'd like to what I'd like to have on the voice of recognition is you should be able to pick first of all which I, I want a historical voice from somewhere in history like Napoleon <laughs> or Gandhi or I want like uh, Winston Churchill and I want to be able to pick who who I could whose voice I'm, I'm using. Arnold, you know, I probably wouldn't pick Arnold. I wouldn't be able to understand a word. You've got the interview yet, so you you, yeah. you you should hold out until you get the interview before you. So I'm so excited that this thing actually understands what I'm talking about. It gets every single word I'm saying, even the slang jargon I'm using. This uh -huh. Honda Odyssey Elite, touring elite. This car is. It really, I, I have to tell you, it, it surprised the crap out of me because, you know what, you think that the, the German engineering, I, I know the motors are better in those cars, but, man, sometimes the little bells and whistles inside make it a little more enjoyable. There's like an intercom in the car. Because, yeah. you know, there's three rows. We'll never use the third row probably, but who knows? Maybe when our kids get older, they'll like to go in the third row. So you, if, the, if your kids are messing around back there and you want to tell them to shut up, you get on the intercom. <laughs> and you're like, listen back, listen up, guys, back there. Cut out the crap, you know? Yeah. I'm thinking, man, that's what Chris needs. Chris, you're at the stage where you actually need something like this. You've got to look into this. I'm telling you, this Honda Odyssey Touring Elite minivan. Okay. Well, my, I, I have something. That whatever you, I have, I, I lease a, I don't even know what it is, a Toyota Hyundai. I hate it. I'm telling you, you when, know. You lease, when your lease is up, listen to me, it's not expensive. It's not like a, it's not a fortune, this thing. Go and look. Go to Honda, and you're going to look at this Honda Odyssey because you you guys have there's a lot of you got to throw all your sports equipment in there for all the, the team stuff that you guys go to. My skis, I got to put my skis now. You're your cross country there. skiing. I so I didn't even know you knew how to cross country ski. I, think I don't. Just, my I wife said, like, "What do you think, Chris?" I, I, I call it cross country falling. <laughs> I said, "My wife said, what do you think, Chris sits on the, on, on the side?'" I said, "Yeah, I thought he sit on the side." With his phone, you know, while texting, they were all texting. Yeah, no, I usually sit in the. I, I usually sit in the in the in the, in the least Toyota Hyundai, I whatever it's you called. Were, to my you were. suburban, a black suburban, <laughs> which I don't, and texting like you or Jay or yeah. Bob Chickarillo. That's what I thought. I was convinced. Black men. But I saw you I actually on skis. I went skiing today. I went skiing today, cross country skiing, and I was so tired and sore. Now I know what low carbs and DNP feels like. So I told Jose Raymond, if anyone ever asks, what's DNP feel like? You say, oh, ask Chris, he knows. Well, and people maybe, say, how do you know? I said, because I got so exhausted from doing cross-country skiing. Maybe if you have some yeah, athletes no. that are falling behind, you should have them come out and then you'll, you'll put them on skis. You know how like you know these, these guys like to train people? Well, you, you, you know what I was thinking when I was cross-country skiing today? Right. Remember the Nordic track? Yes. It used to have that yes. exercise contraption. Yeah used to like all exercise scientists agreed at the time uh that it burnt more calories than any other you know like aerobic activity like the bike or i guess that was like pre trip bills and stuff yeah so. yeah no one ever used it though i know no who's who wants to like simulate skiing probably jose's used it before but oh yeah i love that thing no uh, i don't i don't think he's used it. he likes he likes a step mill and uh, he likes to listen to the show, which I'm sure you are, Jose. So shout out to Jose Raymond. Guaranteed he's listening to this on Tuesday. Yeah, no, I know he listens every week. I, I hate the step mill, I gotta be honest with you. I never used it. I think it's terrible for people with very fast metabolisms because I think it eats up your legs. I really do that thing. Yeah, I well, you know, a lot of stuff eats up your legs. That's the problem mm -hmm. with cardio. You know, ideally it'd be nice to just do no cardio and not have your legs all eaten up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why guys with fast metabolisms that don't need to do a lot of cardio sometimes look better you know although you have those guys that have fast metabolism and then they overdo the cardio in addition to that and they look like you know like they're I know, in a concentration I know. camp you know on stage yeah but uh yeah so, so you went cross-country skiing today how yeah. now how long does a session of cross-country skiing usually last is it like all day? uh no come on i go for like a couple hours couple, i went like a couple hours That's we have the four-year-old no well, we had the four-year-old taking this class and of course i I had to witness him acting up, which meant he skis and they don't have the poles. So he, they they form like a line of ducks behind the teacher, like single file, <laughs> and he's in the back. And what do I see him doing? 
making his own line and passing like this like 14 kids he's in like yeah. 13th place he turns it into a race oh he starts racing them and yeah well, he skips everybody and he, and he heads to the front of the line he's supposed to just you know work on technique right. and stay on a straight right. line but he has to turn everything into a contest he's like yeah he's competitive that's why yeah you probably were egging him on like dad dad pass that no kid. I was just watching from a distance I, but I didn't criticize him because you know I mean <laughs> you want it you want to instill the uh, competitive spirit in well he was thinking outside the box well it's the Olympics it's the Olympic week so I yeah, guess well, you know uh, yeah. uh, speaking of the Olympics you know I didn't know this. I don't know if you knew this. Do you know that the they're under WADA rules? WADA. WADA. Yeah. Do you know that they pay the athletes if they win uh, gold, silver, or bronze in this country? No. I, who, who pays them? Trump. I, I guess the Olympic uh, Committee. The, the, if you get a gold medal, you get thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Silver gets you twenty-two thousand five hundred, and bronze gets you fifteen thousand. And guess what? It's tax-free. Well, well, you know, it used to be it used to be taxed along with the tax on the cost of the actual gold because each gold medal has about six hundred bucks of gold in it. I don't know if you knew that either. <sighs> well, that means six hundred. That means it's a half ounce because gold settled at thirteen fifty this week. Ounce. Obama canceled the victory tax on Olympic athletes who make under a million dollars. So if you make under a million bucks. You don't have to pay taxes on that money for the gold medals. Well, Trump reverses everything Obama does, so that's probably reversed by now. Well, the person who sent me this actually said um, uh, maybe Trump can cancel the taxes on what the gap is, period. Well, you know what's so funny is, is I guess an interesting question would be what do the other countries that's, get? That's, yeah. You know? I'm going to tell you right now. Many countries reward medalists with bonus money. Uh, the U.S. Olympians, oh, we know that, okay. Dude, Kamal, uh, Kamal Agagni, you just interviewed, got 70000 for winning the like, lightweight world championships in bodybuilding, so, right? Yeah. Other countries, but not all, offer medal bonuses in Singapore. Gold medalists take home $1 million. Oh, geez, I would, I, you know, that 37000 I could really use it versus yeah. the million. Yeah. Silver medalists earn a Isn't cool that funny? Listen to this. This is in Singapore. Silver medalists get five hundred grand, and bronze medalists get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So third place is, is is not so bad in in, in Singapore. Uh, in the two thousand eighteen games, there's just one athlete from Singapore who actually capitalized on the big bonus. Well, uh, you know, at least there's one. Yeah. Yeah. U.S. figure skater Adam, Adam Rippon landed a spot on the podium early this week, went through a recent period where he was broke, he tweeted, and he resorted to swiping apples from his gym just to save money on food. Uh, some U.S. athletes rely on performance-based stipends from the U.S. Olympic Committee to cover necessities like rent and food. As speed skater Mitch Whitmore told NerdWallet, a fourth place finish at a key 2017 competition granted him a nine-month stipend to fund his training and living expenses. Um, the, the crazy thing is that, you know, we have no pride in our Olympic athletes. You'd think the government would, would fund all these guys, you know? Uh, well, that's why I'm, 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 I'm making fun of the 37,000 because, I mean... It's better than nothing, and I guess it, now it's better than nothing, especially since it's not being taxed, but it's still not... Yeah. It's nothing, really, to write home about, I guess you could say. Now, if you win the gold medal, obviously... A lot of times, there's a lot of endorsement opportunities that do open themselves up to you, but no one's, I guess, no one is guaranteed anything, is really what I'm announcing. Yeah. No, you're right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, in bodybuilding, there's guys who win the nationals or guys who win pro shows, and they're not guaranteed to get anything. And a lot of guys don't have any contracts because maybe they're just not marketable looking. Maybe they're just, people don't think that it's worth investing in. So, you know, it, it really is kind of crappy you know I mean guys like Sean White you know in the um, he just won the half pipe you know he's a he's a household name this guy it probably makes more money than uh, you know pretty much everyone else out there and Lindsey Vaughn you know she's a big name in, in, in skiing she dated Tiger Woods so I mean there are people that make money but you know for the people who you know win like silly you know gold medals like curling and stuff like that in this country, at least, they don't care. But it, for some reason, every other place in the world, if you win a gold medal, it, it's like a really big deal. You notice that? <laughs> like, we take everything for granted. Like, we don't even give a shit in this country about any, anything. Uh, we have no pride. Uh, I think, uh, you know, think about how much money the government wastes. 
what's what would be like what would be the big deal if they gave a million bucks to every you know gold medalist in this no, country right. wouldn't be a big deal naturally you would you i got i guarantee you'd see a lot more people uh doing well think about it we have guys doing well in this country no one even gets paid for it in russia you know i'm sure they get they get big bucks if they, if oh, they i'm sure it was the first country when i said you know what do they get I'm surprised um, Qatar doesn't have a ski ski team. I'm surprised they don't have the Olympics. I'm surprised they didn't, they didn't build an indoor skiing uh, mountain there, like they have in well, uh, Dubai. They, they 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 probably I think they have the indoor skiing mountain in, in the mall, just like they do in Dubai. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. <laughs> they could do the, they could Not do quite the giant the slalom. Thing. They could do the giant slalom with the gap on one side and old Davy on the other. Sh- slalom. You made it sound like there was like a Yiddish uh, express a Yiddish thing. Slalom. 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 Remember Trump? Slalom. Trump said slalom. <laughs> <laughs> you saw we use that Yiddish word schlong? Yeah. I thought we thought schlong was like for like a, a word for a penis, wasn't it? I thought so too. So, but he used some word against Hillary. He said oh. that schlong in the. <laughs> yeah, well, that yeah, that would make sense, given my uh, definition I just gave you. Yeah. So I was so right. It'd be yeah. nice to, uh, um, you know, have uh, American athletes get a sure. nice check and. It'd be nice. Uh, well, how about the fact about or the non-fact about bodybuilding being in the Olympics? How long have we been hearing that? Speaking about Olympics, since I was a kid. Yeah, you know, you know what? I, 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 you know what the problem? You know what I've always said about it? What? Who cares? Here's the problem. There's no way to judge. We don't have criteria. Well, neither does figure skating. No, they do. They do. They have. They have specific moves they have to make and the moves that they do make or have certain scores. We have a front double bicep and a front last break. Yeah, but we don't have any specifications on how to score these things. It's it's Maybe whatever you like. The, the triple lutz or the, you know, the, I mean, no one goes out there with the tape measure and, it, 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 you know, measures how high the guy got off the ground. <laughs> Can you imagine our judging paddle at the, at the Olympic Games? Like, you know, um, the, the, we, well, you, no, you, they and, and we're right. They hold up the numbers in in, in skating. We'd have to hold up like first, second, third, fourth. Well, you know, you know how like we have we have like guys like like Tony Huge for like you know enhanced muscle. They're in the bathroom like shooting up. You know, like before, <laughs> before shows. <laughs> Meanwhile, they got the in the Olympics. They got like drug testing everywhere, and like and bodybuilders are like they're just doing like all the wrong things. Like you know, before getting on stage, it's. It would just be a disaster. I'm actually happy we're not in the Olympics. I think it would it would be an embarrassment. I think to us, I'm I'm, I'm glad we're like like a sideshow someplace and like a behind the scenes because it wouldn't be good. It certainly would. the only the only part of our sport that would be great in the Olympics, I think, would be um, the fitness Bikini. competition. No, not well. the fitness <laughs> competition because because you can actually if they sat down they can actually quantify it. Maybe they could even let the gymnastic judges like you know judge the the routine round or something like the that. The routine is just yeah. And yeah. They, they, that might make it that might make it more fair. Let let get a bunch of gymnastic judges to judge the routine round. Tell them what the criteria is because they know how to judge uh, that kind of stuff. And then you have the the bodybuilding judges judge the physique round and you combine the scores and no one knows. In other words, the judges from one don't have anything to do with the judge of the other. You have an impartial panel that puts the scores together. And that's what you that's what you come up with. I guarantee it would be very entertaining. Because you'd be taking you, you give gymnasts another life and then you'd also combine that with the fitness, you know, realm of being able to develop muscle. But you know, you don't want to be too big, so drugs wouldn't be such a big issue, you know. And if you drug tested these girls, they wouldn't get huge, super huge, and it would still be really entertaining, I think. And you'd let them do costumes and and wow, I bet you would be one of the most popular events in the Olympics. That's what that's what What's his name? Ben Weider should have been working on. Forget body. Well, he should have been getting yeah. fitness in there. Because if he got fitness in there, then he could have sandwiched the other ones in there, you know, as like a side, you know, right through the side door or something like that. No, but Ben 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 wanted the Ben wanted the Olympics. Ben wanted bodybuilding in the Olympics. Finish the sentence. So that what? Well, he wanted to validate all those years of work. Oh God, yeah. you, filled, you, you you nailed it. We got to go on a game show. <laughs> Bang! You knocked that so far. Dave, the exact word was validation. Yeah, he, well, that's what he wanted. I mean, I don't blame him. But the yeah, guy worked well, his whole you know, life. You, you, you know what's so funny? I never heard. I mean, I didn't have tons of conversations with Joe Weider, but he never mentioned Olympics to me. That was a Ben Weider thing. I don't think it was a Joe Weider. Because you know what? You Joe know, what, in Joe's mind, you know what Joe's mind was. What? See if you can get this one. In Joe's mind, the Olympia was what? 
It was already validated. It was his. Yeah, it was more important than it was self validating and more important than the Olympics. And he had one. He had one Olympic ring in the O for the Olympia. Right. I you know I think that Joe actually understood that. Well, Joe was understood the whole drug aspect of the sport. I think Ben was naive to it. I think Ben knew it existed, but he didn't think it was that important. He figured, well, they don't need to do it. If we just regulate it, the guys will still look the same. It's just you know. (laughs) And Joe, I think Joe probably just pacified. Ben, because it gave Ben something to do, you know, get on an airplane and, and fly in all the countries, and and in in doing so, he united, you know, the all the all the countries all over the world for, for in bodybuilding. So, in his quest to, to create an Olympic, you know, federation, so to speak, of bodybuilders, he really created a federation of bodybuilders that were united as opposed to yeah. sit, fragmented. So, yeah. his. You know what he did really had some good long-lasting effects. It just didn't accomplish what he wanted it to, which it, which it was a losing proposition from the beginning. You know, mm-hmm. it's you know any any sport where you can pay someone off, you know, and and and, and the person can win. That's not a sport, you know. So because it, it's a beauty contest, you know, and well, that, uh, someone someone can take a dive and box, you know, they can point shave. And right, but yeah, and, but the, but the, I know basketball. Right, of course. I mean that. The, there's always that, but most athletes won't throw an event. You know what I mean? Most athletes go an event because they want to win. Now, usually, and in, in, I, I would have to say, almost every Olympic sport, you have control of your own destiny, pretty much. I mean, if you cross the finish line first, you win. Um, you know, if you do the best gymnastics routine, you you win. You know, it's it's pretty yeah. quantifiable. Bodybuilding is not always that way because it it's very subjective about what you like, what you're seeing on stage. Um, you know, and so I think that it's it's much more difficult. Uh, and I think if they at the level that Ben would have had it at, where it would have been drug tested, the guys would have looked marginal at best. They would have all looked pretty much the same. Uh, it would have been interesting to see it, but it would have been nothing that would have wowed us. It probably would have been like a bunch of men's physique looking physiques out there hitting poses. You know, it wouldn't have been mm-hmm. classic physique. It would have been men's physique probably. When it first started, if you remember when it first started, before they got a little bigger, sure, that's what a it little was. big. A li- did you say a little bigger? Before they, well, they're a lot bigger now. But I'm just saying, yeah. when it first came out, it was like a, it was like a beach body look, and that would have been what the the body rolls on stage would have probably looked like if it, if they were subjected to year round drug testing. Imagine that. That's because that's yeah. what the Olympic athletes are. They're out of competition, in competition. It's not just a one time a year. You know, when you get to the Olympics, you get tested. You get tested all year. So I don't think that. Uh, that would have done too well for bodybuilding. It would have, uh, like I said, it would have been a men's physique show on stage. So to me, the only thing that they could have viably been in the Olympics would have been the fitness division. And now we don't even have enough fitness competitors. But if they actually decided to do that, I guarantee you more people would go into it because, hey, who the fuck doesn't want to go to the Olympics, right, Chris? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I think... Right, you're, right, you're right. Speaking of... Uh, well, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the big story of the week, which is Sean Roden, of course. Yeah. Tomorrow on Live with uh, you and I will be interviewing Sean to get the entire story about what happened, and uh, because you know this was the first year Sean had skipped. I guess the last year Sean did the Arnold Classic was in, what 2014 when he lost to Dennis Wolf. Yeah. So he took the in the next two years he he tried to win the Olympia basically is where he put all his eggs into one uh, barrel so to speak. He was second and and third uh, those two years following that, and you know. By all accounts, I mean it was. A, I guess it was a good gamble. Um, what first of all, just let's start off like by this. What what made Sean decide to want to do the Arnold Classic this year? Was it a money thing? Was it just you know what? Uh, I like the show. I want to test. You know. I mean, you you'll, you'll ask him on the show, but I think the conclusion was, uh, you know, I, I think the, cons- the the conclusion was that, you know, uh, you know, I've I've been right there at the Olympia the last few years and this year I dropped the fifth so out of sight out of mind and you know you can wait (coughs) all the way to the um, to the Olympia or you know what you can you know uh, put your testicles on the line and put it all on the line and lay your bet down for the Arnold Mm -hmm. and you're either going to win or you're not going to win Right. And if you win, that's a good bet. And if you don't win, it's a bad bet. So, I mean, he he decided that was something that he wanted to do, and he started getting ready for it. And and uh, 
And it was and looking good. Was, I mean, you actually flew out to California for the day, well, which, is, you know, which I, is an amazing it, thing right there. Yeah, you know, people always ask me, can you, uh, no, because I know what's coming. Can you, and he asked me, you know, can you come to, he said, you know, can you come to Los Angeles? I said, absolutely, yes. Why, no, why said, did you say yes to Sean? Because I, because I thought, you know, I respected that, he, you know, that he took the gamble, you know, he didn't have to do the Arnold. Um, and I thought that, you know, that he was going to look his absolute best. Yeah. And I thought that, I mean, there's there's lots of people who technically can win the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but Sean's beaten all these guys in the show multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, and, you know, I thought if there's any benefit to me going out, I can go out for one day, period. And maybe just let me see what he looks like in real life. and. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and he'll tell you on the show on Tuesday that I told him, Sean, you know, this was the smartest move. Me coming out for one day, you'll look back and say that was the smartest thing I did. Yeah, until he uh, lost 20 pints until of I blood. Got him on the, until I got him <laughs> on the cross-country skis and then yeah. all hell broke loose. That's right. Now, you know, we'll let him tell us the whole story, but from what he wrote on Instagram, and I'm sure what he's probably told you, um, he had uh, some stomach ulcers. He was bleeding internally. Um, we don't know what caused them. Um, probably, I would assume it was stress-related. You know, he's had a lot of crazy stuff going on in his life for the last couple of years. Uh, he was, his hemoglobin, he, I think he mentioned, was, was like a four. And, I mean, that's very, very, very low. He must have lost a ton of blood. So the fact that he looked as good as he did, um, he must have been tired all the time. The guy was severely anemic because of all the blood he lost. Yeah, maybe you should get Dry Sister on the show. It's a Colin, funny Colin on with us. <laughs> Sean might be the you know the the, the toughest guy out there to, to have been diagnosed. I, do you know what did he call you at some point and was he complaining of being tired and run down yeah no that you know what, I don't call people a lot people who know me know that I don't phone them up and uh, he texted me uh, that he was very very tired mm -hmm. and he's never used those words before I mean mm -hmm. we've been I've been with him on you know you know I've traveled everywhere with him sure. to the point of just we don't even know our names anymore we're so tired but he's never <laughs> said I'm tired Right. And he texts me that he's, I'm very tired, and not should I, but he says, I'm taking tomorrow off, just I'm not doing anything. Right. So thinking I he told him, to, he I, thought I told maybe him, he was like, overtrained, that's I'm sure what he's thinking yeah. in his head. Yeah, he said, I was because he, he'd never done doubles before, and he'd been doing doubles, mm -hmm. training twice a day. Yeah. And I called him within, and he was doing two cardio sessions a day. Wow. And I called him within 30 seconds. And I said, "Are you okay?" And he sounded great. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just really tired." He said, I'm, I'm, "He said it matter of factly." He said, "I'm driving back to Santa Barbara, stay with my family tomorrow. I'm gonna sleep, and you know, recover, and then I'll be, I'll be good to go." And I, so I said, "Take, take a couple days then." Yeah. You know, if you're that tired, then you know, one day's not gonna allow you to bounce back. And, uh. I texted him like I didn't hear from him, which was odd. Uh, and he never. I texted him maybe like 14 hours later or 10 hours, you know. And I said, "Yeah, you okay?" And he said, "No, my stomach is in. Oh, I've been throwing up." So you know the flu's been going on. Sure. Around. Was he throwing up blood? So though? Usually that's it, what happens. Yeah. So uh, me not being a doctor, I diagnosed him over the uh, phone as having the flu. Right, which, so, would, which would be something that I think I would probably throw out there too. I said, I said, and I read through my text, Dave. I said, just stay, you know, rest all day long. There's nothing, you know, just just don't worry about nothing. Just rest. And then I didn't hear from him again, Dave. I am an expert on a few things. One is knowing people. The mm -hmm. other is knowing when something is going wrong. I get the sixth sense or something right. going good. Right. And. So time went by, I'm like, if I didn't hear from him that I'm good or bad, something is really up. And I text him and I didn't hear from him. And I had his wife's phone number for some reason in my phone book. Right. And I, I've never texted her. Your and phone book or your, or your phone? Uh... My, my phone, my phone. Okay. All right. I thought you had a lot of the black phone I book. do have a phone book. I do have a phone book. 
uh, in case that I lose the phone, I get. You're, you probably still have people's like from the, the from the '80s. There, there, there. Home do, phone I numbers do. in there, right? Probably yeah. have Jay's home phone number in there. I, I, I bet you know. Let me look up into Jay's. I see if I have Jay's. Let me read it over there. I got my phone book right here. <laughs> you probably Jay. have the number. You probably have his number from when he lived in Boston. Okay. Let's see. J J J J. I got another J. Let's see. No. So I got J Jossum. No, I don't have it. It's funny. You probably have so, another, a code name so that like, yeah, I know. Someone swipes your phone book or something like that. I do. One thirty-seven Tesoro Drive. Oh no, that's <laughs> that's his old house. One thirty-seven Tesoro Drive. That's funny. That is funny. So uh, people can Google map that in Vegas. So, so anyways, short so road. make a long story short is. Uh, you know, his wife's husband, his wife's husband, his wife's father, hmm. uh, went over to check on him, and I guess he was, you know, in really, really bad shape. He was like pink, mm -hmm. purple, whatever. He was not, you know, was, right. he looked terrible, and he was throwing up and vomiting and dehydrated, and they rushed him to the hospital, and uh, and and they pumped him up with, you know, they they. They, they diagnosed him with the flu, of course. I think he said, right. and then that he was bleeding internally. You know, how did they determine that? that? I don't. I don't know. They did a blood. You can ask him. I don't know. But well, they, they must have they, done. They must have drawn bloods on him and saw his oh, they, hemoglobin they, they, was they so low. Well. Yeah. did every single yeah. test possible, right? The well, when hemoglobin blood. comes back at four, Chris, the only choice option is that you're you're bleeding internally somewhere. Uh, I'm sure they probably did some some tests on him, and they must have seen some huge accumulations. In his stomach, you know, in his stomach area. Now, was when he was throwing up, was he throwing up blood at all? Yeah, he was. Yeah, I'm sure that. So that right there is the tip off. That that's when. Oh, so yeah, he had texted me I'm throwing up, and I, he said there's some. Uh, he had thrown up blood or something. That's when I said, you know, go to the hospital immediately. You know, a lot of people. You know, Sean's a very quiet guy. You know, you know, I've never seen Sean raise his voice really to, to anyone. You know, maybe once. You know, but he's very soft spoken. And guys that like internalize all that, you know, they internalize their stress. They don't let it out. You know, you and me scream like a bunch of lunatics, and so, you know, we let oh, all I that out. Yeah. yeah, he Sean doesn't scream. He just internalizes it, and you know, and you know, that's usually what happens. People who get ulcers are people who internalize a lot of their stress. You know, and uh -huh. um, I just, I have, I just carry the burden on my shoulders. That's why I have no shoulders left. That's what, that's what the doctor told, told me. We all, we all manifest our own stress in in different ways, and uh, you know, I'm glad that they. Caught it, and that he was smart enough to go to the hospital because uh, you know if he would have lost any more blood, he could have died. You know, because what happens is your, your blood pressure drops because there's not enough blood in the circulation to maintain, you know, uh, the circulation. You could you could just drop. You know, so I'm glad he got that diagnosed. Um, you know, now obviously stress can cause ulcers, but he also could have that H. pylori, which is a, a bacterial infection that causes stomach ulcers and actually if you don't catch it it's, it's actually easily treated with antibiotics but if you don't catch it it can lead to, to, to stomach cancer uh, down the road so it's good that you know he caught it now and, and diagnosed it but um, that sucks and uh, at least it's nothing serious and I'm sure he'll probably be back and ready to go now do you think uh, Sean would, will just kind of forego you know the ideas of competing, or you think he'll and wait to the Olympia, or do you think? Yeah, and wait to the Olympia. Okay. The Olympia. Okay. You, you know, think... initially, initially. Uh, Maybe you should do like New York Pro or something like that. That you that's. Can, uh, if you can get back in oh, shape, you know. For what? I don't know. Just Kai Green did it, you know, that one year. Well, I mean. Because Sean, does, I don't has Sean ever competed at, at, in? I think he did compete in New York Pro one year, but I'm saying he doesn't really compete on the East Coast that much. It would be kind of cool to see him out here. Yeah. I'm sure Weinberg would love it. Yeah, I don't think that's in the cards, you know. I mean, the guy's been, since 2002, top three in the Olympia every year, with the exception of once. Dexter did it. I mean, 2012. Dexter won the New York Pro recently. Well, yeah. Um, it's a good title. Yep. Get the ring. Well, Dex, that was just part of Dexter's history, you know. Well, Dexter wanted to win every show, I think. I think at that point, at that point, I think now he's looking for. Hey, did I miss any shows? You know, I gotta, I gotta yeah. make sure I, I won them all before it's all said and done. So, well, Sean's gonna be missing that lineup. You know, a lot of people, you know, were billing this, you know, as one of the, the best Arnold lineups of all time, and I think it still will be. But um, I was hoping to see that Dennis Wolf, you know, Sean Roden kind of uh, rematch. 
know, back on that stage. Obviously, Dexter Jackson in that mix, too, which will be great, and Bill, William Bowen. I, I mean, it's a tremendous, tremendous lineup. You know, you got Ruli Winkler in the lineup. Uh, Cedric, obviously, is the defending champion in that lineup. Max Charles. Lionel Baiki, who can always be a, a dangerous guy. And, you know, I saw, I don't know if you saw, I saw a picture recently of Hide Yamagishi. He's huge. You know, he's working with Milos really? again. Milos has got him on the insulin protocol, I'm sure. And, really? Um, is he huge? Yeah, yeah, he's big. He's doing the open. Send me a picture. Send me a picture. I was wondering what he was looking yeah, like. Yeah, I'm trying to think of myself. Oh, I think he's on Milos's uh, Instagram, if you check. Milos has a picture up with some of the guys he's working with. But, uh, yeah, he's definitely he's definitely back. Actually, Wolf should have gone. Wolf should have gone to Dennis James. He should have gone back to Milos and let Milos. Yeah, yeah. He used to he used to train with. Uh, Didn't he put forty pounds on him? Or was that N- Nasser? No, Wolf. that was that was that was. Yeah, he Wolf used there? to work with Dennis Wolf. <laughs> Wolf needed to put another forty pounds back on after the the surgery. I got news for you. We should send Ronnie Coleman out to train with Milos. Milos would have him walking probably. Uh, yeah, you'd have him back up walking. He'd be, he'd be back to three hundred pounds with Milos. Yeah, he does. He does look huge, huh? Yeah, oh, you saw the picture, right? He's, I, I don't yeah, know what his waistline sh- looks like, but his shoulders and arms and chest look. Shoulders, great. shoulders, yeah. shoulders, shoulders are just gargantuan. It's the insulin, the Milos insulin protocol. No protein too. <laughs> now, I, I, uh, you were and I were talking about the, the two twelve division with this uh, Heidi Schupen. Are you telling me? Uh, no visa. Is that the you predicted it? But is that the confirmation well, we I, see? I I just uh, if you if you play back half these shows, you 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 get. You've been saying it all along. I, I have to give you credit for it. Is that true? Did you hear that he's not going to be coming? Yeah, you're right. Someone told me he's not in it. Okay. I mean, I, it's not a. It's not. It a, doesn't surprise uh, me. I mean, why would he be able to get? You know, a visa? Look, look at the you. Why don't you look up the? They took Roden off the list for the honor. Let's see if they took out took off uh, Chopin for the two twelve. List. I, I just see the arm. I see uh, the list. I still see Roden on my list. I might be looking at the wrong list, however. Yeah, you got to be on the wrong list. What what website are you looking at? The ipbpro.com? No, someone had sent it to me that, that it was right. Didn't someone send it to you, too, that, that Roden was out and they based it on the list? They had modified the Yeah, list I know, but I haven't seen the I, I can't find this supposed list, know. you know. I, I got the. Uh, You know, I got the list, but the the list is still un unupdated. I still see Sean Rohn's name on it. Well, maybe he's going to, uh, Matter of fact, Hottie's name is on the list twice. <laughs> What's it for the open and the two twelve? No, the two twelve. I think they duplicated the, the names. That's all. But uh, yeah. I mean, who knows? But I predict. I predict. I'll I think stay they, by that prediction. Yeah. I will stay by that prediction. No, he is right. not doing the show. You were right. I, I believe it. I completely believe it. I think Kamal El Gargan is uh, going to be very dangerous in that lineup now because uh, it's going to. I think that uh, between Jose and Kamal, I think that's going to be your uh, your top two well, right there. With, Conor, with, I mean, look at Dave. With Sammy Trout, let's stop. And Sammy Trout is in that lineup too. A lot of people, you know, yeah, he's, you know, he's very good. Overlooked him um, last year at the New York Pro. I mean, he was really good. You had him in the New York Pro last year, right? I'm not making yes, that. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was really good. Dude. So yeah, I, th- I thought he could have played high enough for show for sure without a. Uh, I guess you can't add more than the word for sure. The good, the interesting thing is Kamal and and, and Jose are kind of like similar ages, similar type physiques. Um, I think it'll be a good battle between the two of those guys. And I between think. Who? Between Jose and uh, Kamal, and I think that Sammy Trouty is going to be another guy who's going to be right in there as well. You know, with the obvious, obviously, guys always up there as well. So, and then you get David Henry, whose legs haven't looked that great the last two years, but you know he's always very dangerous. He, he yeah, he's, he's, he's you can't ever overlook him because no. you know? he just you can't overlook him. That's all. Yeah. Every, you know, I like the two twelve lineup this year because it's not a lot of people, but everyone in the lineup is really good. So it's like. There's no throwaway guys. You know, so a lot of times you get these guys with, oh, there's like 20 people in here. What are, the 10 of them don't even belong here. No, but everyone in that 212 lineup is, belongs there, which is great, which will make it way more exciting. You, know, you can really dissect, you know, who's good, why they should win, because you don't have a lot of guys cl- kind of cluttering up the lineup, as I like to call it. You know? It's kind of sad anyway, because after the first call, 
you know, yeah, the second call is kind of important, but not really. And then you mm-hmm. have to get down to a third call out. No one's even watching anymore, you know. So it's like this is the Arnold Classic Invitational only. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to be like kind of like, ugh. All right, we can go to the bathroom now because the third call out's out there. So I think the open and the two twelve are small enough now that I think we're going to get some 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 really good quality guys, and we're really going to be able to analyze that top group. And this coming week, obviously. And the week after, we'll be doing a lot of analysis, Arnold analysis of shows, and handicapping, you know, as to who we think is going to win. You know, the, the, the truth of the matter is, and I hate to say it, because, it, but it's true, um, Dexter Jackson has is, is got to be considered, you know, you really got to consider him the most dangerous guy in that lineup, because the guy's won the show more than anyone. He knows how to win shows. He knows how to show up at his best. He's the most consistent guy in, at all time, you know, so... I think Dexter is is going to be very dangerous in this lineup, and I think that to to not mention him as as the guy who can win this show is you'd be crazy. We could throw all the names we want out there, but I think Dexter Jackson is one of the most dangerous guys in this lineup. Well, he's you know going to be in shape. That's a given, right? Look, the the judges obviously like this guy. <laughs> they gave him more first places than anyone else in history. So when you see a Dexter Jackson. In an Arnold lineup, when the guys won five USA Arnolds already, you know, if anyone else is off, they're gonna go to Dexter. You know, Dexter's their guy. He's all right. You know what? You're right. No one's in shape. Dexter's got. We're giving Dexter the show. You know, and that that's mm-hmm. how he wins these shows. So, you know, we can talk about how much better Cedric is than him. We can talk about how much better, um, you know, uh, Wolf is when he's at his best. We could talk about set, you know. We could talk about uh, Bonac, you know, placing higher than at the Olympia. But the bottom line is, if these guys that we just mentioned, I mentioned, don't come in at their best, and Dexter's right there, looking as sharp as ever, he wins the show again, mm-hmm. you know. And, and we'll be saying, how the hell did he beat all these guys? Well, they beat themselves. And Dexter was just there to collect the fucking prize money, as he always is. <laughs> Would you love to know how much prize money Dexter's won? I wonder if he's calculated that, you know, all added up all the shows that he's won over the years. Mm-hmm. I'd like to know how much prize money he's, he's pocketed. Probably. That's got to be a record, too. No one's ever even thought about that. That's definitely got to be a record. He's got to, I bet he made more money than Phil Heath, even though Phil makes four hundred grand every year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he has to. Just multiply the shows, man. Right? You would think. I mean, I guess if Phil wins another one or two of them, he might... Pass him in the, in the all-time earnings, just because that Olympia at four hundred grand is so high. But um, for the first place, but because when Dexter won, it was what was it like two hundred, one hundred and seventy, something like that. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah, it wasn't that much. But uh, you know, Phil got lucky. He's been winning the one these the past couple Olympias. He's won. I think he's the last two years he won eight hundred grand. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah, which is what it should money. be. You know, it should be a million bucks at this point. Yeah, they they should. You know, Phil should. If you're listening, Phil. You should uh, speak to the government and see if you can get it tax free, like the Olympics. Yeah. What? Well, how about this? They, what about if he donates? Look, he probably pays what two hundred of that four hundred in taxes. Oh, God. You say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What if he donated the two hundred rather than giving it to the government? If he gave it to the some of the other competitors, <laughs> you know, for for expenses, you know, that type of thing. All the other guys who don't make money, you know, it, well, he has twenty grand for you, twenty grand for you, and maybe you get like a tax write off on that. On that. <laughs> It's like he's like sheltering the money, you know, with all these uh, these kind of guys that have no money to, to their name. Classic physique, I, you know. I like I said, I don't I don't like these cattle calls they got here, but they they're doing it for the classic physique division. They're doing it for uh, women's physique, and they're doing it for men's physique. Anyone, I think they got to took the first fifty people who came or something like that. And how many people they got? Top ten people make the top, the finals. So we'll see. Classic physique. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine Breon Ansley losing the classic physique. Can you? Um, I guess you have to see who shows up, and I don't know all the people. They have a million guys, but you know, is he beatable? Of course he is. I mean, I don't know if he's beatable by anyone. Although Arash is in the lineup. And he's always dangerous. Well, 
you get the you get the weigh in the day before, so the, there's that that's, snafu. That's tougher. For yeah, that's, that's tougher. For I them. mean, I just, someone just someone just told me the same thing. They but they raised like, they raised the weight class five pounds, so that I know. Sell. But the weigh in is still the day before. Yeah. I I really like Santi Aragon. I love his physique. I think he's going to be really good in this lineup. Um, looking at all the names here, Kevin Ford, a new guy coming up. We've covered him on Muscle in the Morning. Really, really good. You got to look out for him. He's got to be dangerous. Um, I think a lot of people. I like AJ, AJ Shakuri from Canada too. He's really good. So there's there's a lot of good guys in this lineup. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, the fact that Chris Bumstead is not doing the show that that's that's interesting. I don't know what. There's obviously a strategic move here. I don't know why he decided not to do it, but I would have. We all would have loved to see that rematch. Obviously from the Olympia, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Couple you of the think other mistake, guys, yeah. mistake that he stayed out. I don't know. He's you know what he's young, so maybe he, you know he figures let me put some more size on, come back to the Olympia. I got mm -hmm. five pounds to grow this year. Why should I not do it? Why should I not grow? I don't think he. I don't think he had a problem making the weight. To be honest with you, so now that he has five pounds to grow, I think he he really you know with his young physique, why not put the muscle on? I think it's a good yeah. idea. He's got all the time in the world. There's no there's no rush. They got the wheelchair wheelchair pro division uh, this year again. Harold Kelly won the last two years. I see the women's physique. I, I don't know if you've seen. Have you seen the pictures of Shanique Grant? I sent you a link to the uh, our forums. Yeah, yeah, she's she's uh, pretty wacky, huh? Yeah, she's crazy. If she, if Shanique Grant makes it to the stage, which is which yeah, what's is, that? Wait, okay, so so what's that mean? <laughs> well, she's missed two Olympias so far because she why because who knows? She got hit in the eye once. With, Someone hit him in the eye. Then this past year, she got sick or something like that. I don't remember. But she obviously she's she's like a Cedric with the Olympia. You know, she has bad luck with that <laughs> Olympia. She can she'll nail every other show, but she can't get to that freaking Olympia for some reason. So if, assuming she gets to makes it to the stage at the Arnold, yeah, I don't I don't think anyone could beat her. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone in the entire division could beat her. To be honest with you, I think she's that good. Yeah, you're but, probably right. You're probably but right. you know, making it to the stage is, is just as important as. Uh, is looking good when you're up there, you know. So, let me let me. I'll give you this. You you saw the pictures of her. How would you rank her? Like if if we were back in the nineteen in the Corey Everson era, she'd kill destroy Corey. You think so? Wow. Okay. Yes. You know, I said when I saw, her, I said, man, I wonder if Chris if Chris ever got a hold of this girl, what what he could do with her. Probably. She should should destroy Corey. Yeah, I I think she's got better lines, you know. Much better. Much 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 much. You know, battle lines. What about a, a young Linda Murray? Um, she has her V tape is wackier, but you know, Linda is just you know more muscle. Yeah, she had real thickness. This girl's got s s tremendous structure. Probably stand and relax better structure than Linda, but Linda, don't forget, had wheels, dude. Yeah, she had good wheels. Especially when she was younger, she had crazy wheels. And she had back width. And, I mean, you name it, she had it. Yeah. You know, it, we, Linda was the, 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 essentially was the wheel of female bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And, and, but Shanique is also, what, 22 years old or something like that? I mean, so she's got a yeah, lot so of it's, years. It's, it's an unfair comparison because yeah. Linda was much more she was mature, older. you know, been training longer and... I think she puts a lot of excitement into that division. I really do. I mean, if she, like I said, if she can you know, get... I think it, there's a little maturity factor there, which you know uh, comes along with you know age. Obviously, you get a little bit more mature and able to handle the, the successes. But physique-wise, man, no one touches her. I, mean, I really, I'm so impressed with the way she looks, and uh, I think uh, I think she's going to shock a lot of people. Like I said, assuming she makes it to the stage, I hope she does at least. They had a show this past weekend in, in Medellin, uh, Colombia. Oh yeah, that's right. What was it? The Sheru classic. Sheru's all over the place. Now Sheru texts me all the time. Uh, Sheru is a, a guy from India. He lives in New Jersey though, and he, uh, he started promoting these shows in India first, and now he's in. Uh, he's got one in with Dubai, and he's got one now in uh, Medellin. I don't even know how he picked Medellin as his third show. I can understand Dubai and India kind of have like a some kind of synergism to them, but uh, how he got to Medellin. The hometown of uh, what's his name, Pablo Escobar. I have no idea. So, uh, but uh, it was a small show, very small show. Andre Ferguson, 
won the show unanimously in the men's physique division. They had a men's physique. Fernando Shala Blondon from Colombia, hometown guy, was second. And uh, Raymond Edwards, third. Logan Franklin, fourth. And uh, Jacques Dalcy Jr. from the USA, also fifth place. So congratulations to those guys. There was a pro bikini event. Uh, Romina Basualdo from Argentina. I remember when she turned pro in, uh, at the Arnold, excuse me, at the Amateur Olympia in, uh, what was it? Mexico, Acapulco. Acapulco. Amanda's reminding me, Acapulco, Mexico, we were there. And uh, so she wins that. And she'll be requalified for the Olympia. She was second at the Olympia in bikini, so she's uh, she's racking up. I guess for her, she's from Argentina. This is a hop, a skip, and a jump. This is almost like a hometown show for her. Alicia Bacini from uh, Brazil was second. Kim Gutierrez from uh, Chile was third. Ellie Fernandez from Mexico, fourth. And uh, Raquel Gonzalez from Mexico, fifth. So... Uh, congratulations to uh, Sheru and that uh, pro show and the many in there and uh, it's good that they're moving around these shows to different countries I think it's, it gives the um, people who live in the region uh, more of a hometown advantage and I think uh, an ability to qualify for the Olympia Andre Ferguson just wants to win everything though I don't even know what he's doing now there but uh, he, he went to many and then he won I think he's one of the most interesting you know, guys in the men's physique division. There's, he's like calling the Muhammad Ali of uh, men's physique. And he had more wins last year than anyone else in the, in the division. And I guess he's starting off the year with a bang because he's doing this. He's now, obviously, he's now going to be going for that win at the Arnold. He was second last year. He was second at the Olympia. So look out for Andre to do some big things. I'm sure we'll get him on the show. He's always the most one of the most popular interviews we always do. So I, I don't want to – I like to get him on. Get his – Asking him his predictions, Chris, for the for the event is, is more interesting than uh, than me making my own predictions. Why is that? Because he's very confident in himself. He has no problem saying that he's going to win the show. I love it. Well, he backs it up. He does. He does. You know, when he first was coming on my show, and when I was in New York, he would come to the studio because he lives there, and, and he'd be telling me he's going to win this, he's going to win that. I'm like, this guy's out of his mind, you know. And 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 then he delivered, and I'm like, he's right. Because he was telling me, ah, I don't really train that hard. I wasn't really dieting. Wait till you see when I actually, you know, put my mind to this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that's what everyone says, Chris, right? And yeah, then, well, and then he gets the wrong. guy does it. You know, he actually does it. It's crazy. You know, he actually delivered. You know, finally, someone delivers on some a promise they make, and uh, that's always fun when you see that. Someone could actually put up with uh, with the, what their prediction is and make it happen. So. I'm looking forward. We'll get him on the show, obviously, before the Arnold as well. I decided there's so many people to interview uh, these next couple of weeks that I have to pick just the people that I actually find interesting or have a good story. So this coming week, obviously, we have Rodin on to talk about why he's out of the Arnold. It's interesting. You know, uh, my wife Amanda said to me, she's like, oh, because I, I did a video on the, on the fact, you know, I'm breaking news that he's out of the Arnold. She's like, well, you think people are going to really care? I'm like, yeah, everyone cares about this stuff because... Because he's such a big name, and you know the the video got a million hits. You know, got a lot of hits. You know, people yeah. really were interested, and people really like. Sean's one of these guys that people like a lot. You notice that? Um, he's a likable. I don't, he's a I likable, don't know. I don't you know. know. I don't know who people like and dislike. No, he's. I, mean, a, he's, I know who they dislike, but right. But he's he's one of these like neutral guys. It doesn't. He never says anything bad about anyone. He's very quiet, but he always delivers the good and always places very high. And people like his physique because it's very classic looking and. So, you know, when a guy like Rodin, who doesn't do the Arnold the last two years, comes in and is going to do it, and then all of a sudden he's got to pull out, people want to know what the hell happened. You know, I don't blame him. In addition to the Rodin interview, we'll, we're also going to have a very special interview with Bader Bidot. I was actually contacted by him, and he says he has a special announcement. Uh, he has your phone number? He must, yeah. He somehow, t- he, somehow call- he actually called me on the phone. So, he said... I, I want to come on the show. I said, okay, of course. I said, Tuesday. He's like, okay. So I'm going to get him on the show. And uh, he's got a big uh, announcement he wants to make. And uh, he wants to, I think, from what I understand, he wants to uh, talk about corruption in this sport. So it should be a very blockbuster interview. We'll see what he's got to say. And I'll, I'll of course, ask him for his predictions. Uh, who does he got? Who does he have in the show? Does he have anyone in the show? Rolly. Rolly. Oh, Rolly. Rulies in the show. Anyone else? Anyone? That's, no two twelve guys, right? I don't know. Yeah. Dashkanani must be uh, taking a break to the Olympia, I guess. He's usually in the show. He won it last year. 
And uh, my other interview of the week is going to be in part three with uh, Amin Alai, King Kamali. And uh, this week, we started out with just Amin Alai, the first part one. Part two, Kamali called me up. He wanted to join the interview, which made it really inter interesting last week. We talked about, you know, what happened the day that Craig Titus and uh, Kelly Ryan um, and Melissa James, uh, that fateful night when Melissa died. And uh, Amin revealed... Craig's first-hand account of what happened that day, as, as told to Rich Greenbaum, who's no longer with us, who died of colon cancer, but supposedly Rich had told Amin. And so if you want to find out what Craig's version of what happened was, which I almost believe it, I almost believe it, it sounds very believable, listen to that interview. It was a blockbuster. It's got a lot of hits also, a lot of traction. But part three now is coming, uh, because at the end of part two, we were talking about, you know, uh, the body blows at the party, at the Sound Factory, because there was a whole scene there at that Sound Factory in Manhattan, which was an underground club. It was a club that really opened up after hours, like 4.30. You would, it would open up, and no one would even be there at 4.30. You'd have to wait till 6, 7 in the morning, and people would start trickling in uh, on Sunday morning, and they'd go all day. And I don't really know how the whole thing got started, but Robbie Lopez was a big player in that. Uh, Kamali called him the, the devil. <laughs> they got every, all the bodybuilders involved in this scene. And Robbie's going to tell the whole story about how the whole thing started because this is a scene where Valentino was and uh, King Kamali eventually was there. I, I I wasn't a regular there, but I, I went a couple of times uh, just to experience it. And uh, Ronnie Coleman, I uh, not Ronnie Coleman, um, uh, Chris Cormier would come by there when he was in town. Uh, Bob Bonham, I used to always see him there because he used to go with Valentino. Uh, Dorian Yates went there a lot when he was in town as well. So. It was a uh, it was a happening you know, little uh, after hours place, you know. That was kind of fun back in the day. And uh, if you want to hear the stories about the old days, a lot of guys evidently love these old day stories of uh, what bodybuilding was like, you know, back then. And uh, listen to part three that's coming up this week. Obviously, we're also going to have some uh, interviews with some of the Arnold competitors that will be starting this week as well, as well as the following week, leading up to the Arnold Classic, which is going to be. Super exciting. Chris, you'll be out there. Lee Priest is going to be out there as well. And uh, I won't be making it this year. I mentioned that. That's just too much with the new baby. Well, you, you did mention it. You, you, you speculated about I'm it. I'm not going. Yeah, I'm not going. Sorry, I'm not going. I'm, I'm needed at home. Who's going to cover the Hall of Fame? I don't know. It's a good question. I might. You want to go there and do it? Are you kidding me? I wouldn't even like. You can. I need you to I, interview. I don't even know who the sports figures are. I need Who's... you to. You know Ronda Rousey. I need you to interview her. I. Ron who? Ronda Rousey, the, the, the you know the MMA. Oh, oh, well, she's a fighter, the fighter. Yeah, fight, you, know, you can you can interview. You know what? Chris is very coy, but he's a very good. I saw you in it when I send you to like Europe and stuff like that. You do great jobs with the interviews. You you get better interviews than I do sometimes. You know. Yeah. Uh, so we'll send you there, uh, interview some people, and uh, Lee Priest will be there. So my our photographer will be there as well. So he's getting he's bringing his video camera. You and Lee Priest will do the wrap ups. People will love it. You know, because Lee, be, Lee, Lee will call it like he sees it. You know that. You guys, yeah, will no, have way, you guys will have way too much fun. And if Sean Ray gets in the middle, I'm sure either one of you won't have any problem not going to happen. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> you know. Sean's going to make fun of you turning in your Mercedes for a minivan. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. But, uh, I mean, I could keep it if I wanted to, but it's, it's, it's a, my lease is up in, in, you know, they get you. They, I, I've been leasing a Mercedes probably for the last 10 years. If you don't turn it in at the end of the lease and you keep it, they waive the uh, origination fee or some kind of fee. It's like a $600 fee. But if you turn it in, you get charged an extra 600 bucks because they want you to lease another car. Yeah. Now, I would have leased another Mercedes just to save that money, but they, these idiots don't have like minivans. I told you that, so I didn't, uh, yeah. I didn't do it. And so I'm going to lose the, uh, the, the 600 bucks, but... Um, Welcome to middle age. You're yeah, gonna be driving yeah. around. You're gonna be driving around with two kids, two kids in a minivan, and you're gonna be like me. You're gonna get out of this, out of the van. You're gonna take your kids into the little candy store. This is a true story. So with my four year old, people say like, "Oh, your grandson is beautiful." <laughs> the difference is my wife doesn't trust me to, to drive with the kids yet, so they'll have to be a lot older before I take them out but you I'm probably, serious that's a true story I was in the candy store one day or, you don't even look old you no I know but I was I was I was in the store yeah. one day this store I, I bring my four year old in to buy candy mm -hmm. and I bring him in all the time 
And then I went in a couple times because they sell other stuff uh, other than candy. And the lady behind the counter said, "Where's your grandson?" Oh my god! And I was, you know, you I'm so busy, Dave. No, I'm. You know what? I th- this is a true story. I'm so busy. I'm thinking, who's my grandson? <laughs> I'm thinking like godson or your nephew does she mean so you, don't even, you don't even get it yeah she said he is your he is yours he's your grandson right I said no he is my son and she goes oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I gotta tell you if I thought you looked like a grandfather I would tell you you don't even you have a full head of hair what, what, where are they basing this on you know what it is? Because you live in Maine. No, you live in Maine, and people in Maine get married when they're like freaking nineteen because they got nothing else to do. And they no, have because kids. it's 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 a type of store where like like kids go in who are like sixteen and eighteen, and they have a baby already. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It. Because in Maine, it's different. There's nothing to do there, and, and the, the weather sucks in the winter, and people get they, they get pregnant there, and they have kids young. You're like a you're like a New Yorker. Or like L.A. person living in Maine, you know, you're in like hiding. You're like one of these mafia well, guys that has to. That's like you know, you know, so funny? You, you, They've like changed your name or something like that. I I literally went out to have sushi last night right. with my wife, and I looked over, and there were there were like a lot of kids in the sushi restaurant. My wife had commented on, and I looked over, and I saw this guy who was like. He looked like sixty, and he had like a four-year-old and like oh, an really? eight-year-old. And That's I was, funny. I was thinking, is that guy the father? I wonder, or the grandfather? Yeah, well, could be the father, right? Sure, sure. Because only the, only the older parents can afford to go to sushi, right, with their kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the young kids go to McDonald's, you know. Yeah, it's absolutely you. You nailed that, Dave. Yeah. Well, all the stereotypes were, were, you know. Well, that's kind. Of, that's true, though. There's a, you know. Oh, I wanted to mention also, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if you uh, heard the story, but I'm I'm going to be interviewing another person this week, uh, Sean LaBega. He's an IFBB men's physique pro. He lost his leg, Chris, recently. Oh, yeah, blood yeah I heard about that. I heard about that. And uh, he uh, was experiencing coldness in his leg. He went to the hospital. They kind of dismissed the whole thing as not being a big deal. And to make a long story short, he wound up having to have his leg amputated. And he's going to tell us the whole story. It's, it's crazy. The whole story is, is nuts. Uh, he got it from like mid calf down, and because the de- I guess the, the nerve died or something like that, the blood vessel died. And they obviously, when your leg is like that, they don't, they, they got to cut it off. You know, they don't want an infection to set in and you know, lose more of your leg. And he's in pretty good, damn good spirits. I got to admit, I don't know if I would be in such great spirits. You know, if I yeah. Would, you know, I have very, this very terrible, animal, actually. Yeah, this this terrible quad thing going on, and I'm always petrified about it. This kid is very brave. He's in the midst of a really good you know, career as a men's physique. The only advantage is they don't judge the leg in, in, in men's physique, so you know it might not you know hurt him competitively speaking uh-huh. as much as it's going to. Yeah, be I mean, it sounds odd, but it's a good point. It's a huge inconvenience. The fact that he's still mentally very positive about what he's doing and that he's going to come back. It's phenomenal. Gonna, I think that's phenomenal, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, it I, is. we got to give our prayers out to him because obviously he's not out of the water yet. He just had it done and so he's still you know, in and out of the hospital because we were supposed to interview him last week and uh, we're going to have to postpone it to this week because it was uh, he was stuck in a typical doctor's appointment. I actually have to go to the dermatologist uh, tomorrow for his skin check because I like to get my skin checked every six months. Which usually turns into once a year to make sure I don't have any skin cancer or anything like that, especially after what happened with you. And you know, Amanda had the little skin cancers taken off too. So I'm going to get checked tomorrow at like 8:45 in the morning, which kind of sucks. But uh, I guess it's I, I'm, a, I'm I become like the, the the old person. I'm like, you know what? If you can get me in the first appointment, I'll go I'll go five in the morning just so I don't have to sit and wait because I hate waiting in, in doctors. Uh, yeah, same rooms. here. They why are you waiting for anything? I don't know why they can't figure out how long it takes a doctor to see a patient and actually have real appointments. Because I, you can go in there. There's no way you're not, especially in Florida, you definitely wait in two hours. In, in the op- there's no way you're getting out of this, this room in, in another two hours. And it's crazy. But if you go as a first appointment, usually they're not as backed up. So that, that's my uh, strategy. Now, I try to get the first appointment, even though I don't like getting up that early. It's worth it not to have to deal with the, uh, all the bull crowd, you know, waiting in the waiting room. 
Because, you know, there's always some pain in the ass who comes in and probably spends, you know, an hour with the doctor when they should be spending 10 minutes, and that sets everyone back. You yeah, know. well, you get the scooter types coming in before. With yeah, the, all the, all the, great, all the uh, hypochondriacs, yeah. <laughs> all the hypochondriacs coming in who, uh, who think there's 400 things wrong with them, and they actually, they'll get a lift to 100, you know, because of the, how paranoid they are. You got people like Sean Rohn who doesn't complain about anything, and the poor guy is bleeding to death internally. And then you got guys like Scooter who, who complain about every single little ache and pain they get, and they got nothing wrong with them. You know, the, the you know, the test level is you know one one thing below the normal range. <laughs> right, right, one run, one run. <laughs> He called me up. He's like, my uh, potassium is, is too high. I'm like, or too low. I'm like, well, how much is it? Uh, he's like, it's. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hey, well, what's the normal range? It's like like a half a point below it. Yeah. He's like, I think I got to go for further testing with a hematologist. I'm like, hematologist. I said, there's nothing wrong with you. You probably were sweating in the gym. Well, I did do a leg workout. I said, you dehydrated. So. I, don't, I think some people just like to go to doctors. I'm convinced of it. I'm absolutely convinced of it. No, they like some it. people. They yeah. like the attention. I think my dad likes to go to doctors now, even though he complains about. It, I think he really like. My dad loves the attention from all the nurses there, and even though he likes to yell at them. I was trying to explain to him how he got down to Florida. He still, <laughs> it wasn't. Even, it wasn't worth it. I tell him, don't worry about it, Dad. Yeah, it's too involved. Yeah. It's very complicated. He's like, how did how'd you get me down here? I said, we took a plane together. I said, you, you were sitting in first class with me, drinking wine the whole time, the whole plane ride. I said, I was? I wish I remembered. Yeah, he would have enjoyed it. I said, no, you, you don't wish you remembered it. Was not, it wasn't fun for me. It might have been fun for you, but it wasn't fun for me, I said. Because the whole oh. way, he was screaming at me that he was being kidnapped by me. And all the people around me were looking at it, looking at me like I was some kind of like criminal or something like that. Yeah, wondering if he really worked. Yeah, it no, might have been. <laughs> I, you know, I have to ask, why did they hold? Why are they holding the Olympics in 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 Korea, in South Korea? How did the Koreans get the Olympics? Well, didn't you see that? Because nobody wanted it. Oh, is that why? Yeah, it was just it's the same thing. It costs so much to build oh. the, you know, build the facilities right. to host, you know, the the stadiums. Yeah. And the security costs, and the transportation costs, and the you know the Olympic Village costs, all that. Everyone has everyone in the Olympics. Uh, recently pulled out. I didn't know. The, even in the summer games recently, I, where's the next summer Olympics going to be? I forget. I don't sure. know either, but I think... Well, the Summit like, Olympics, I think, are more desirable. I think. Well, I think. E even with the Summer Olympics, nobody wants it. Boston was on the list, and they were like a front-runner, and then they decided, you know what, we don't want it. The, the reason they didn't want to spend the money. Well, you know, it's, with security now, too, it's so difficult that, that you have to spend a well, fortune you know, on all the cops you know? and everything like that. It's, it's not fun. It's really not fun. The only good thing about when you have the Olympics in, in one of your cities... It makes you redo the whole city. You know, usually, like it, when Atlanta had those Olympics in what oh four, yeah, it, it revolutionized that whole airport and the whole transportation system of, of Atlanta. Yeah, I think bro. it was great. For, it was really good for the economy there. I just recently watched the uh, Muhammad Ali again on that when he lit the torch. Oh yeah, that was great. Very touching. Very touching. So you know, I guess I, guess it, I didn't realize that, but you're right. It probably is very expensive to hold the Winter Olympics, and there's probably no. I mean, I don't know what like NBC and all these stations pay to broadcast this stuff, but uh, yeah, but it's it's a loss for everybody. It's it's turning out like every year for each country to be like one big like money sucking, you know, extravaganza. Isn't there someone who knows how to make money in these things and can turn the Olympics into? A I money don't know. We can call it the Trump Olympics, if you know, just brand it out, Pepsi Olympics. There you go. Who who's good at making money in uh, the world today? With the you got to get like someone who runs like a rock concert or something like that. You know these rock promoters and let them promote it. No, I don't know. You know it's it's an expensive endeavor. What they got to do is they got to hold like you know how they have these crazy super fights between like um, Floyd Mayweather and. Um, his name Con uh, Conor McGregor <laughs> they got it like it, it's like a guest posing at the uh, uh, like a bodybuilding show you go to like okay we're having the Olympics but Conor McGregor is going to fight you know uh, Floyd Mayweather again uh, the final night of the Olympics 
May, so, maybe just it, to make it, it worth it, you know? Well, maybe if they did this, you know, we're going to have the Summer Olympics, and we're going to do a with drug testing this year, and we expect all records to be broken. People would think, oh, I'm not going to watch it. Probably get a million people to watch the 100 meters alone, you know, a million people. A million people. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I've been watching the Olympics, actually, believe it. I haven't seen it every night, but I, I've actually, it's been very entertaining. I, I like to watch all the crazy ski events. You know, when you think about what they were doing years ago, like like in the 80s compared to what they oh, do yeah. today, I'm like, these guys are out of their fucking mind. I know. It, it is insane. The jumps, I mean, they, they ski jump and they land backwards. Uh, I mean, you know, it looks amazing when they're doing it, and it's, it's a wonderful thing to watch, but I'm thinking these guys got to be killing themselves in, in practice. And... We watched, my wife and I watched a couple of downhill uh, events, and two guys crashed. They hit the wall so hard, I'm like, there's no way, there's no way this guy didn't hurt himself really, really bad, you know. Uh, and if the elite guys are falling, can you imagine what all the guys who are trying to become elite are doing to each themselves? they got to be all messed up. They all have torn ACLs. No one has uh, their own ACL. Uh, a lot of injuries in skiing. Arnold, didn't Arnold hit a tree when he skied or something like that? He oh, you're himself. right. He did hit, hit a, hit he a tree. He went to the Arnold Classic that year. He was in a lot of pain, I yeah. remember. So. Yeah, you're right. I guess cross-country skiing is a little less dangerous. but uh, Like if you're skiing, let's say all of a sudden a little hill came up. Would you be able to go down the hill and, and slow yourself down enough so you don't kill yourself at the end of the hill? Well, uh, I should be able to. I don't know if I can do it all the time. Yeah. It, let me ask you this question: What's more painful, the day after like a leg workout, like the, after you know if you haven't trained legs for like twenty years, or the day after the cross country? <laughs> let me see. Yeah, I got I got skiing. memory loss. Or, <laughs> so training legs or what? Training legs after like never having done them for like you know ten years, or doing a, a day of cross country skiing, which leaves you more sore. More sore would be training back after one day with Serge Nubray. There's no no pain on earth that I could explain. Oh, you did train? I didn't know you trained with him. Yeah, I trained, I trained uh, with Serge Nubray before. It felt like explosives were put into my muscles. And then <laughs> You're because he makes you do 400 like sets. That's and a half. Yeah. It, it, so many sets that that it's the most painful thing you'll ever experience. All right, so it beats cross country skiing, is what you're saying. Yep, yep. I'll buy if it. you want, to, if you want to get sore, go. You, you know who you have to have on the show? You have to have on Rory Littlemile because I've know. seen him on Instagram. I'm gonna reach out to him after the. And honest. listen, you want to know how great? Write this quote down. You know who admired to death Rory? Who? Serge Nubray. Really? And why was that? Because he thought he could go all the way. You know who else loved Rory's physique? Ed Connors. Bob, Bob Paris. Oh, really? Yep. Straight from them to to me. Both of them told me, Rory, Rory, Rory. Uh, I bet he doesn't know that. I'm sure he doesn't. I bet, I bet he'd be flattered. Uh, <coughs> he, he had completely, like, all, all, all the tools. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've interviewed him before, but on the radio a long, long time ago. So I'm going to... I'm going to definitely reach out to him. He'll probably... If I remember correctly, him and John Brown were, were great interviews. Um, I think Sean Ray actually hooked up those two interviews with me, for me, actually, because he was he knew them. But I'll reach out to them. Now with social media, it's so easy. I'll reach out to them. Uh, I have a couple. I have a list of whole people I want to interview, believe it or not. But um, I think that's the second time I've asked you to interview. Uh, yeah, you did. you did. We'll get him on. Maybe I'll get I'll get you on with me because uh, you know him pretty well as well. No, I don't know Rory. So oh, you yeah, that's, well, that, No, that's why I want you to interview him so I can learn something. Okay. I know so, Serge. Who I helped Bob Paris back in the, in the day? I don't know. Maybe but surgery he always, break? He, he always would come in flat. Yeah. He probably didn't have any clue what he was doing. He probably yeah. just was a genetic yeah. freak. Oh, Typical. Sure. Typical. He, he, there was no poaching back then. There were no coaches to poach. You know, no. if, in, in this day and age, he would have been poached by everyone probably. You know. Yeah, you know who has tremendous after. photos of him, I'm sure? And Rory, Rory will tell you this. Cool. He was very good friends with Jason Mathis. Oh, so he probably does have good pictures. So. All right, we'll reach out to him. And uh, guys, uh, make sure you stay tuned this week to all our Arnold preview uh, interviews. We have some, the, the big interviews is the Beta Badai interview, the Sean Roden interview. That's going to be on Tuesday. I don't know when we'll put those up. They'll probably be up either Tuesday or Wednesday. And uh, I'm going to have Sean LaVega as well. 
And don't forget, you don't miss the Amin Ally with uh, King Kamali and Robbie Lopez. And we're actually trying to get Victor Martinez too. So that should be a, a really terrific interview. And then uh, maybe we'll even do uh, maybe we'll even do a, a Heavy Muscle TV Whack Pack. Uh, I have to find out what Big Lenny's doing. We got we got so many requests for Big Lenny, you know. Um, but I'm putting them off because we have the Arnold. So maybe I may have to Lenny. We may have to wait till after the Arnold to get you one, unless you want to do maybe. Maybe you, me, and Big Lenny can do some handicapping. No, he, he's class. probably out doing a review of the Black Panther movie. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we're out of time. Until next week, remember, with Heavy Muscle Radio. The truth hurts. Good night, everyone.